Hey guys, it's Sam and this is my March wrap up. March had both, I believe, my first five star read or one of the first five star reads of the year and also my first DNF of the year. And pretty much one of my first DNFs ever, so let's get into it. The first book I read in March was Wind Witch by Susan Denner. This was a reread. I decided before reading Blood Witch that I wanted to reread Wind Witch. This was something that I was very conflicted about. I wasn't sure if I wanted to, but I felt like if I started Blood Witch, I wasn't going to be fully in the world, and that was a solid choice because rereading this was exactly what I needed. I just flew through this, really enjoyed it, enjoyed it even more than on first read. I think I gave it four stars on first read, and I gave it 4.5 on reread read. I noticed so much more. I was like just so much more invested. I'm still very blown away by all of these like characters arcs and just like how intricate this world is and all the new stuff that we're introduced to. So I really enjoyed this reread and it was a good choice to do before reading Blood Witch. So the next book I obviously read was Blood Witch, which is the third book in the Witchland series. I've done a full review for this and a gush, so I'll link that on the screen so I don't get too in depth with everything about this. But I absolutely love and adore this series. You guys know it's my favorite currently running series. I, it just continues to not disappoint and just get better. I really feel like this book is the beginning of a new arc for all the characters. A lot of the characters go, have gone through a lot and have grown a lot in the first three books, but I feel like this is a jump off point to something new happening. I feel like we're getting a lot of really big things revealed plot wise and new character wise that is just like really changing the game up. A lot more things about the magic system are being revealed in the world and the foundations of the world. And again, the characters kind of leveled up a bit, but now they have to level up again. You know, they have to go through more. So I really enjoyed all of their stories in here. There's always the main character that it revolves around, but there's it's a multiple POV story. So although Blood Witch and the Blood Witch is the one that you focus on the most in this story, all of them are evolving so much. All of them are going through a lot. And you never feel like any of the characters are just there to like supplement the main character's stories or anything like that. Everyone feels so real like they're existing outside of the story, and I just immensely love these. I am always so upset because I know it's going to be usually well over a year before the next book comes out because Susan writes books slowly, as she should, because they're always well done instead of rushed garbage. So I'm always like, I need the next one. I'm like, it's going to be... A while, but I will continue my trend of rereading the previous book in the series before the new one comes out because now that I know, I did that with Truth Witch before I read Wind Witch, I did it with Wind Witch, and I'm just gonna need to keep doing that because that helps me get like re immersed in the world in a story that I already kind of know like what's happening in this part of the story, but I get reminded of things and it's just super helpful. Highly recommend this was five by five stars if I didn't already mention, which I think that I did. Am I talking really fast, like faster than usual today? If I am, I apologize. I feel like I'm just like out of practice. I feel like it's been a while since I filmed. It has because I had some like backlisted videos and stuff and some some things in reserve so I'm just I guess I'm just excited to be here. This next book was a DNF which was a struggle for me and that was Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. Now this was my Patreon book pick for the month and after I decided to DNF this I asked my patrons if they wanted to vote on a new book or if they wanted me to read the next book that they had already voted on or any of these different things and they were like Maybe it's fine. Just you can DNF books and you don't need to like replace it with another book for us. Like we get it. It's fine. Like overwhelmingly that was the response. And I'm like, you sweet, sweet babies. Thank you so much. <laughs> but this I was not enjoying. I gave it about 100 pages, which is my kind of rule I think I'm going to make for DNFing. I decided after doing this, I felt so relieved, so much better. As you guys know, I do not, I basically never DNF books. Like I don't remember the last book that I DNFed. And with my TBR goals, I kind of feel like DNFing books is going to be helpful for me because I have this TBR that I want to shrink and I want to get through a lot of these books and if I DNF things I'm not enjoying that'll help me because I'm gonna like only be reading things I enjoy and getting through my TBR and maybe coming back to some of these things like some of the books I DNF I might keep this one I'm probably not because I just was really not enjoying it but let me kind of go into that. This is two perspectives, both in first person narrative, which I don't hate first person all the time. It's just not my favorite writing style, but I hate when you have dual perspectives that aren't labeled both in first person. And I don't feel like these two voices narratively were very different. And I just, I didn't like it. I wanted to push through because of the setting. It's in Japan and it's based on like some Japanese like magic and mythology stuff. So that was really cool, but it just wasn't gripping me. It felt like it was a little bit 
It felt closer to like a middle grade story than a YA story. It still was definitely YA, but it felt like the lower end of YA, which is just not the like range that I tend to read. Obviously, I tend to read more of like the upper YA and adult leaning things, so this was just not really for me. And then I got to a point in the story where I was like, I think, I just feel like I know where this is going to go, and I'm not really interested. I kind of was predicting things that were going to happen. I didn't really feel any attachment to the characters, and I was like, if I force myself to read this, it's just not going to be fun. So I ended up DNFing it, and I do not think that I will pick this back up. And lastly, the moment that so many of you have been waiting for, I read Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. As you guys know, I knew I was going to like this book. It was never, I was never putting it off because I didn't think I was going to like this book. I just knew I was going to like it, so that's kind of why I was putting it off. And then I was putting it off because people kept telling me to read it. And you know when someone tells you to do something and you're already going to do it, and now you're like, I'm not going to do that thing because you keep telling me to do it. And like, what the heck? Like, your brain kind of does that thing even if you're consciously not thinking that. That was kind of happening with me. So, and then I just was getting like intimidated by the hype and everything else. But... This ended up being my Patreon VIP pick, so every month one of my Patreon supporters, in addition to the poll that everyone gets to vote on that's a Patreon supporter, one of my Patreon supporters gets chosen in like a raffle drawing and they get to pick any book off my TBR that I can read. So it's not even like the poll where I kind of pick some choices and they pick from those. They get to pick anything. And they picked this. And then Sarah Jane challenged me to read this book. So actually, instead of doing a gush this time, I have a reading vlog devoted completely to this book because we were doing a new thing where we challenge each other to read some of our favorite books and then we vlog it. So I challenged her to read The Night Circus, which she already read and she did the vlog for, and then she challenged me to read this. So I was doubly challenged this month to read it. And I'm, I'm very glad that I did. Obviously, I knew I was going to like it. It was a very fun experience. But Monday, you guys will get my spoiler-free review and my reading vlog full of spoilers on this, my, like, live reactions. But I actually went into this not knowing a ton. I kind of knew it was an assassin, an assassin school, and that's it. So I was actually surprised for how much hype there was about this that I didn't know a lot about it. But this definitely reminded me a lot of, like, Red Sister and Grey Sister by Mark Lawrence, which is one of my favorite series. But it was obviously different enough as well that it was its own unique thing. I really love Jay Kristoff's writing a lot. I was really surprised by how much I liked it. I really like Illuminae, which he obviously co-authors, but I hadn't had any solo Jay Kristoff, so I really enjoyed his writing. I like the like little commentary in the footnotes. I like how the like narrator sometimes speaks to you as the reader. There's a lot of things that I liked about that whole style. I liked how brutal the world was. I liked that I couldn't really quite predict all the things that were going to happen. I enjoyed Mia as a main character. I enjoyed the side characters. I, I liked everything. I liked the like gore of it, I like the religious ties into it, I liked all of it. I would even say that I wasn't put off by the sex scenes in this book, because this is an adult book, in case some of you don't know, it's adult, it's graphic. So there are sex scenes in this book, and I wasn't like disgusted like I usually am with sex scenes, because I, t I just don't tend to like sex scenes at all. They're usually not well written, and I just don't want to read about sex anyway. It's not something that I personally like. So these actually felt like part of the story instead of this like random sex scene with totally different language and writing that is usually just dumped into books. So that was good. So overall, very enjoyable, but I'll be talking about this more in depth in my review. But I gave this five out of five stars. I will be reading the next book in the series, but I'll be reading it closer to when the third book comes out in the fall because I've heard there is a really big cliffhanger. So I'm gonna wait because I can. So that is it for all the books that I read in March. There was a theme here. Do you see? All the red. Red was a theme. I didn't pick that. I didn't decide on that, but somehow that happened with all of the red covers. So comment down below and let me know your favorite book that you read in March, and even your least favorite, if you DNF something. Let me know. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye.